This is Betty Tracyak with a video tutorial for constructing circle spinner cards and variations of shape and various tools that can be used. I also have a few tips and tricks of things that I've learned along the way. This is the basic circle spinner card. This one was made with the circle nesting dies. Here's one that was made with nesting oval dies. And here is one that was made with a different shape die, again, nesting dies, but in a flower shape. And this one was made using punches. The key to circle spinner cards is this negative space right here. So you need to use products that are concentric. And you can look through your stash to see various things that might work for that. One thing that you need to note is that um, some dies will have the cutting edge in a different place. In this set, it happens to be on the inner edge, and on this particular brand, the cutting edge is in the center. Just keep that in mind when you're measuring. I found that for this set here of circle nesting dies, it worked if I used one and then skipped one. When I measure those, I just lay those out concentrically and go from cutting edge to cutting edge. That is at least 3 eighths of an inch, so that would work. Another set that would work would be this one and this one. These two would also work. So any of the combinations, you've got various combinations to make different sizes in your cards. Now this set right here is a little bit more tightly nested. So what I found with this set was that I needed to actually skip two. So this die, skip two, go to the next size down, lay those out concentrically, and measure that, and those will work. Because of that, then you also could use this size and this size. So there's, again, just various combinations. You just need to play around, see what you've got in your stash that might work I also found um, that this set of flower dies that I had also would work. Now it doesn't work quite as smoothly as a circle die, I will have to say that, um, but because this space is greater than the 3 eighths of an inch, it does work. You can see that for this card it does spin, but it's more like a maze that the little bee will go in and out of. You can move it back and forth, it does spin a little bit but obviously you're not going to get as nice of a spin on a shape like a flower. For this card then, um, the difference in this one was that I found two punches that I was able to use. This is a two and a half inch punch and a one and three quarter inch punch and I'll be demonstrating how to do that as well. Supplies needed to make the car are your selected dies or punches cardstock and what I have done to make it simple is that whatever my card base is the upper layer is cut one quarter of an inch smaller than the cardstock base and then the contrasting layer which will go underneath is cut one half of an inch smaller so this will be a contrast underneath this will go on top so this is a regular card base here cut this top piece would be one quarter of an inch smaller, and this is one half of an inch smaller. I just cut this little piece off here to save some cardstock, but because my circle spinner is going to be up here, that will not be seen. Other things that you need are sticky dots. You can um, find different ones at the store or use stamping up dimensionals. Now I found that if I use these, these have little points and those need to be trimmed. So the ones that I found that I like are actually quarter of an inch that are made by Sticky Do by uh, the Paper Studio, but you can find a lot of different variations on these. And I also use the adhesive strips from Stamping Up and two pennies. Begin by taking the piece of cardstock that is going to be the upper portion of your card and 
lay the dies where you would like those. I want mine right in the center, so I'm going to lay that concentrically. Just take a little bit of time to make sure that you've got that spaced correctly. And then I use a post-it note to hold those in place and run those through the Big Shot. Once those have been run through the Big Shot, stamp as desired. I did some stamping on the outside, added a little sentiment, and then I put the main image in the center of this one. Now you don't always, will not always be doing stamping because sometimes this will be DSP, um, so that is just a, an optional step. Next, take the two pennies and sandwich a adhesive dot in between. Now I did find that if the pennies have oil um, from being handled or any dirt, it's a good idea to use a soap and wash those so that you have a better adhesion of your dot. And if these don't stick, if your adhesive is not as good, you can either use glue or a glue dot. Just sandwich that together and set that aside for the moment. The next step is to apply adhesive foam on the back of both pieces. I've already done a bit of that, so I'm just going to add some here and here and another piece here. The thing that you need to be conscious of is that whether or not your adhesive will interfere with the spin of the penny. So I just take this and give it a little test on each of the pieces to make sure that nothing will touch. See how I came a little bit close right there, but it doesn't actually touch. If it did, just reposition that. Next, take your cardstock base. Just double checking to make sure I have that the right direction. I made a card the other day where I had that upside down. And take the contrasting piece of DSP, apply adhesive, and center that. Then take the stamped outer piece and take a moment to make sure that you have that centered because once that's stuck, that's pretty difficult to move with all of that adhesive. And then take the center portion and line that up. Again, taking time to make sure that you have that. Oh, and I should have mentioned before that I put my penny in so that I have that right there. And take time to line that up. Then whatever you want to be for your spinner, that goes on the top. In this case, I took a three-quarter inch piece of cardstock, wrapped that with baker's twine to make a little ball of yarn. I wanted to demonstrate how to use the punches to make the card. It's very similar. Um, just use the two and a half inch punch, slide that all the way in, punch that, and then use the one and three quarter punch. Uh, the kind of fun thing about that is just lining up a design you want to use. I actually found that it's very quick um, to use the punches. If you were going to be mass producing, this would be a good way um, to quickly get a, several of these done. I've applied the adhesive off camera and I'm just going to check to make sure that there is no adhesive that would interfere. I feel like that right there did touch just a little bit, so I'm going to reposition this slightly. And check this one. No problem there. They are sticky. Then this is assembled just the same way.
for this butterfly, I just added a bit of Gold Wink of Stella. And slip that in, carefully line up. And then just add the sentiment at the bottom, and it's done. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. I look forward to seeing your projects in the gallery and welcome any comments that you may have.